Hello and welcome to the Coon Hunting University Podcast. This is your host, Tyler Duncan. And like always, class is in session. Hey y'all, so Coon Hunting University is brought to you by Superior Light Company, best lights in the business. If you don't believe me, go check them out, nighthunters.com. Use coupon code CHU podcast at checkout and receive almost twenty dollars off Hellcat Max. But that code is good for any superior light on that website and the battery tester, which works with the Hellcat Max. So go over there and check them out. So before we get started, I'd like to thank everyone who's left reviews and on the Apple Podcasts. And <laughs> so I had one review from Shoal Creek Kennels asking me how to contact the podcast and. So I'd like to reach out to them. So you can message the Facebook page or the Instagram page if you have Facebook or Instagram. And if you don't, you can email us at chupodcast at outlook.com. Man, we look forward to hearing from you, bud. Um, and maybe you can go back and rewrite your review if uh, if you can't get to us that way and and. Uh, give me your email address or, or something. So today I'm joined by Mr. Joseph Blake Robertson. So we'll be discussing his hound action. Jack's recent success. He placed third at the PKC world hunt. Uh, Jack has a total lifetime PKC earnings of around 45,000. Blake just got back into hunting about a year and a half ago. So it's even more impressive that his hound has had this much success recently. So, without further ado, Mr. Joseph Blake Robertson, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Hello. Hey, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, sir. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, yourself? Oh, I'm doing great, man. I appreciate you coming on here, Mr. Joseph. So, if you could, please tell the folks that are listening to this a little bit about yourself. My name is Joseph Robertson, but I go by Blake. I know on Facebook and all that, it says Joseph on there and everything but anyways i i live in a little town and uh, i was raised in union parish louisiana and uh, now i live in uh webster parish louisiana uh i work for a power company here i'm a lineman for a power company and uh i was raised up my dad farmed farmed his whole life and still does and i was raised up just helping him and on the farm and my one of my uncles my dad's one of my dad's older brothers he had a he was big into hog dogs and hog baying competitions and stuff like that. And I had never coon hunted before, nothing but, but I always been around working dogs and, and stuff like that and, and cow dogs and hog dogs. And and uh, we was at a practice bay. A good friend of ours there said, hey, man, what you doing this evening? I was about 14, probably 13, 14. He said, what you doing this evening? I said, oh, nothing. Them. He said, well, you want to go coon hunting with me? I said, coon hunting? I said, that don't sound like no fun. He said, yeah. He said, just come ride with me. He said, we can uh, we ride around and turn dog loose. Well, that was where it all started for me. <laughs> I ended up buying his dog about about two months later. I ended up buying his dog, and that was the, the dog that got me started coon hunting. <laughs> and how old were you at that time? Uh, 13, 14. I can't remember exactly. Probably closer to 14. And you're 13 or 14 from there and when did you really start getting into competition hunting and the that style of dog i i bought that dog's name was bull i bought bull from david and, and he was a he was one of them type dogs you turn him loose and you you go get him out from underneath the coon and i shot everything he treated i was a kid and it was fun <laughs> and uh i piddled around with bull for probably about a year and a half and I got a little young female and a good friend of mine uh, named Clark Canterbury. He had chicken houses. Well, my dad had chicken houses, and my daddy had done some service work and stuff for him. And and uh, he said, hey, he said, you, I was I was helping my dad one time. He said, we have some competition hunts up here in Simsboro, Louisiana. He said, you ought to come come go hunting with us one night. Well, by that time, I, I, uh, I didn't have a bull no more, and I had a little blue tick female. And... Uh, she was a little coon dog, but she wasn't no knowing what I know now. I mean, she wasn't no competition dog, but that was the dog that I first started 
competition hunting with, and uh, man, I, I went to hunts after hunts after hunts. I, I was like 15. I don't even think I had my driver's license, but I drive all over the place <laughs> going to all the hunts right here local. So I ended up getting a, a little walker female. There, there wasn't much to her. And, and then I ended up a good, uh, another friend of mine by the name of Brian Jones. He uh, gave me half of a black and tan male dog, and I won a few casts with him, and, and he was a pretty nice little hound. And by this time, I had done gotten up older, you know, got a job and started working and all that stuff, and I ended up working out of town, and I actually got out of it <laughs> up until about uh, a year and a half ago. I was at a, I had a fishing camp on a lake here, and uh, I woke up one day, and I said, I want to get another coon dog. I called the guy up that a while back that I had bought bull from, and he had a about a two-and-a-half-year-old male dog at Tree Coon, and I went and bought him from him, and that was really where I started back. And what was that dog's name? He was a dog named George, and uh, he wasn't really no competition dog. Uh, I put him in a few hunts and won a few hunts with him, but he wasn't very consistent and uh, went through a few dogs and everything. And then uh, I was like, dead gum, I'm ready to – I'm, I'm going to start winning, you know. I um, called uh, Josh Howard. He don't live too far from me. He runs the Queen City Club. And I said, Mr. Josh, I said, I'm looking for a dog. And he said, well, I got one for you. He said, uh, come go hunting with her uh, Friday night. Well, I head that way Friday night, and I, I get close over there, and I call him to ask him where he lives at, you know, when I get close over to, to where I, I'm pretty sure he lives, you know. And, and uh, he said, no, we're having a competition hunt. He said, come on to the club. I said, well, I don't know what this dog sounds like or nothing. I'm supposed to be trying her out, you know. So he tells me, he said, he told me what to listen for and everything and got out there, and it was a UKC doubleheader, and I hunted her, and I won the early round and the late round, and I ended up buying her, and that's the gin dog that I hunt now. And uh, it wasn't but about um, a couple weeks later, the PKC world hunt, and I went up there and uh, just having fun, and I'm, that's where I met Mr. Ron Chapman at. And that was how the jack dog come about. So what style or what type of dog do you like? Well, I like a dog. I'm going to say, I'm as, like me, I'm going to say I'm a still a rookie handler, you know. I can hunt a lot. I know uh, I, I hunt a lot during the week. I can keep a dog right and that kind of, that sort of things. But I like a deep and lonely type dog easy to call type dog that's what i like now jack isn't that uh jack is his name is action jack and he is an action packed son of a gun like he's gonna he's that type of dog when he don't need to get treed when he needs to just get through there and shut up he's not going to he's getting wooded but the type of dog i like is uh i like a deep and lonely by themselves. i say deep and lonely to me you know, people, a lot of these independent dogs that are deep and lonely, mile through there, three quarters through there, them dogs are made that way. Them dogs, they may have a little natural independence about them, but for the most part, they're made deep like that. To me, a natural independent dog, they don't, they stay what I call just to their self. They don't, you know, say there's a dog 400 yards over here, that dog may just be, you know, 200 yards to the east or to the west or something you know they're not a lot of them dogs that are way in there every cut loose they're made that way they're not yes uh they'll have some natural independence about them but for the most part they're made a mile in there every cut loose you know or three quarters or a half a mile in there every cut loose you know but i like a dog that stays just to theirself and trees coons any particular line of dogs you like to hunt and why not really uh like i said um I've, I've hunted a little bit of all of them. I've had some wipeout bred dogs. I've had some a few coma dogs. I've had jacks out of track man and and Jen's uh she goes back to track man. Uh, it seems like every dog that I've ever had that that uh that uh really um that that I got along with that I you know won a little bit with or that I enjoyed actually went back to track man somewhere. You know uh I'm not saying that's that may be coincidence you know but uh i know there's a lot of that blood out there and uh but it does seem like you know most every dog that i've enjoyed went back to track man somewhere you know uh but for the most part i'll hunt anything (laughs) 
Yeah, I'm the same way, man. I agree with you about hunting anything. So let's talk about Jack a little bit. What was it like having a dog in the final three of the PKC world? Man, I'm going to tell you, uh, that old dog, he, uh, he's something. He really is. He's, he's one of them type dogs. He'll make you pull your hair out. And then just five minutes later, you're <laughs> walking tall. You know, he's, he's just one of them type hounds. It was great. Uh, you know, Casey Dooley was handling him and I give Casey, you know, a lot of credit for, for a lot, almost all of his success here lately. I mean, he's, Casey's a good handler. He, he, he stays composed in a cast. He, he, uh, he don't, uh, he don't get rattled. He, he's good. He's slick. He, he's a good handler. And, uh, and he, he knows what he's got to have and he don't knows what he don't need. And, and I, I should give a shout out to Casey. He's a good friend of mine and a excellent, you know, I trust him with anything, but it was great having a dog in the final cast at the world hunt. Uh, the old dog, he, uh, it was rough getting there. He, um, one early Monday got beat late Tuesday, one early Tuesday got beat late Tuesday. And, uh, the dog I was hunting Monday and Tuesday, uh, I ended up selling her the, uh, the side chick dog. I was hunting her and I, got, I sold her while I was up there. And, uh, so Wednesday I, I just walked along with Casey while he was hunting Jack and just just got beat the uh the dog named pud beat us thursday we kind of swapped it up a little bit and i hunted jack early and uh dog looked good um went out there and uh got struck and uh drove a track in there and come treed walked in there there's a big den i'm like man i was struck for 75 on that one and uh come off the tree and the other three dogs was treed and um the other three dogs was treed, so I'm on the strap, and we go score them, and I'm pretty sure they was circle two. And uh, we recut, so stripes open, and I get struck good and uh, drive a track in there about 900 and have a coon, and that's all it needed. And uh, won that cast, got back to the club, and Casey was hunting a dog for another guy that night. And uh, we sitting around there, and Casey gets up, gets there, and uh, we waiting on everybody to get back in, and and uh i said uh we run me to the store and get me a snack there's a store right up the road there and i go in there and get me some beef jerky and a coat and i said man i said something in my gut is telling me to let you hunt this rascal late and i don't said i said i don't know what it is because i want to win just as bad as anybody but something's telling me in my gut to let you hunt this dog late he said what's well, that beef jerky you just ate and <laughs> so we swapped it up and, and casey hunted him the rest of the way and uh and everything but uh he uh he hunted him late. We 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 drew um a uh, guy from Georgia, a guy from Alabama, and uh, I forgot the other guy, but it was his first UKC, I mean PKC hunt he had ever been in, and he had won early at the World Hunt, and he was excited, you know. And uh, Jack struck four hundred and treated coon, recut him, and, and and struck back in four quarter and treated another coon, and he ended up winning that cast for three and a quarter plus, and uh, that was how we you know, got in the finals at the world hunt. So were you on the final cast in the world hunt? Yes, sir. I was. Well, yes, sir. I was. We've uh, heard Joe Manning's perspective of it. Why don't you walk us through what happened? Well, uh, we, first off, props go out to Joe Manning and Goose. Them son of guns put on a performance. I mean, <laughs> look great. I mean, that, that young dog, it was his night to win. I don't think there was a dog that was going to beat that dog that night. It was just meant to be. And uh, nice young dog. But uh, heads up round before that, I mean, Jack looked great. Uh, treed three coons in about an hour and two, probably about an hour and 15 minutes. But uh, there was some stationary time work there. But the guy, uh, the guy we was hunting against, he withdrew. I don't know, about 30 minutes left. I think we had 550 plus. Uh, but anyways, go, go to the late round. Uh, we cut loose and uh, Z400, Goose 75, jacks through the country left-handed. <laughs> On the cut loose, he went the wrong way. And uh, he gets way in there about 700 yards, and I think he realized, hey, there ain't no woods this way. I need to start drifting back, you know, to the uh, – to the you know the other direction well anyways in the meantime goose through the country struck 75 tree we go to him 
uh, we get pretty close to him. Jack, about 100 yards deeper, rolls around, kind of makes a fish hook, and comes in, comes in about 50 yards from Goose, and bam, slams one. So we scored Goose, walk off Goose. Coonot University is brought to you by Superior Light Company. Use coupon code CHU Podcast at checkout at nighthunters.com. If you're in the market for a new light, do not overlook Superior. They make the best light in the business. The Hellcat Max Flat Dark Earth Edition is awesome. Come standard with the new and improved high intensity green laser. Come standard with the newest design and dual walking light modules, offering the brightest walking lights currently available on the market, bar none. And it comes with your choice of red or true amber or double red color module technology. The Hellcat Max new module design reduces weight without sacrificing burn time or brightness, resulting in an overall weight of just 20 to 24 ounces, depending on your cap selection. The Hellcat Max offers the newest battery technology, which allows for five hours of continuous main beam burn time on the highest setting and over 10 hours of highest auxiliary light settings. All controls can be found on one easy nine positions click switch and all superior lights come with a two-year warranty are made right here in the usa so check out superior lights use coupon code chu podcast at checkout at nighthunters.com thank you to mr jamie mr sam at superior lights for supporting kunan university podcast and making this podcast possible so i ask all the listeners if you could please go over there and support superior lights Use the exclusive discount code that is only available to Coonot University podcast listeners, CHU Podcast. Superior, step up to the max. Now, back to the show. Cut goose, start stationary on Jack, run it just a minute, bam, tree, 400. Run the time down, and I don't know why. We walk into the tree, and uh, Jack comes off the tree, makes him a loop. Puts his nose on the ground, I don't know, probably about 15 foot off the tree and comes back on it. Well, Hunter Pump right there. Come off, I'm on the stationary, start stationary on again, bam, tree for a hunter. Go in there. In the meantime, Weed had treed Marv for a hundred. Uh, not too far from there, maybe 200 yards. Go in there, Jack got a coon, so he's 50 plus. Goose is setting 175. We walk in Jack's minute, Goose rolls up. Joe Tree's goose for 100, so we're on the lead. Go in there, both of them got a coon. Marvel struck 400, so he's got 200. We got 50, and goose got uh, 300 plus. Cut back loose, and uh, I don't remember exactly how they struck back in. I want to say Marvel 100, Jack 75, and goose 50. Jack works around there for a minute, comes Tree. And uh, Tree's, I don't know, three minutes, and goose comes into him. And uh, go in there, and it's a big oak tree, leafy. We look, look, squall. We can't find nothing. Uh, Mars through the country, walk a minute, recut. Goose, uh, uh, goose goes and trees another one pretty quick, and uh, so he's setting like four and a quarter, something like that. And uh, Jack treed another coon, and by this time the hunt time's winding down. The goose gets treated at the end of the hunt, and uh. Has another coon. Joe don't hesitate treating him. He's got it one no matter what, really. And uh, we go in there, and Goose has got another coon. But man, it it was great, you know, just making it that far. No longer than I've been back in it, and you know, having a dog that made it to that point, you know, in the PKC World Championship. I mean, that's that's you know, great. Yeah, that is awesome. And congratulations to you and uh, Mr. Casey Dooley on that. That's an awesome accomplishment. It really is. Yes, sir. So, what are your future plans for Jack? It's like is you know we won the that first pro hunt about two weeks ago in Conway, Arkansas, the new pro hunt format with him. Uh, we won the whole thing. Uh, I got him that we got him to hunt. You know, he's won, you know, thirty five thousand dollars in the in the month of October, but that ain't gonna stop us from hunting him. I mean, I know he's eight year he's eight years old. He's eight years and four months old. But he's in he's in as good a shape as any other dog around. I mean, he's in real good shape. You can hunt him every night, and he'll hold up. So we're going to hunt him. I ain't going to slack up none. So are y'all planning on breeding him to anything, or have y'all already bred him to something? Yeah, or what? well, well, yeah, yeah, we've bred him. Uh, after the PKC World Hunt, I mean, phone went to blowing up. 
I've bred him to two females since then. Uh, got several more wanting to breed. Matter of fact, had one message me this morning uh, out of Oklahoma wanting to breed to him. I bred him personally back in March. I got him in at nationals back in March uh, on the first night. We doubled up on the first night. And uh, my my gen female was in the heat. And when I, I got beat Saturday early, bad storm, bad deal. But um, when I got home, I bred him to Jen, and she had a litter of eight, raised every one of them. And uh, two of them pups are six months old, two of them in South Louisiana, and uh, they're six months old. And one of the two doesn't treat two wild coons. But, yeah, we, you know, we're going to breed him, you know, breed him to a females and see what happens. And we plan on getting collected probably after this winter. We're going to get him collected. Are you going to plan on selling any straws off of him? Well, it depends on how much we get. If we get plenty, you know, to sell a few or whatever, but uh, it, you know, uh, I don't, I've never done nothing like that, so we'll just kind of play it by ear and see how much we get, and how many times we collect him. Uh, but if we don't get an abundance of it, we know we'll probably just breed to what, you know, select females. You know, we probably won't sell it to just anybody. Yeah. So. Yes, sir. What's your most memorable hunt? That I've been in, or actually just been on the cast or something. Just been on a cast. You been in, been on a probably, cast, whatever. It, it give me a pleasure um, hunt. Well, probably the like I said, I, I haven't been back in competitive coon hunting, but about a year and a half. And like I've done, I've done it before when I was six, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. You know, just local thirty, fifty dollar hunt stuff like that. But but since I've been back in hunting, the most memorable cast that I've ever hunted in, you know, uh, was probably when I doubled up at uh nationals and uh i had never hunted with no no none of the what i call big name dogs and stuff like that and uh i had a tough cast early and late which every cast at nationals and stuff i mean all them dogs had to win and qualify to get there and uh but uh it was um the late round it was uh me hunting jack uh john strickland with apollo michael ward with cowboy and mr eddie simmons with uh, uh moby jr and uh that cast right there was probably the the most you know i was probably the most proud about winning that cast because i had never hunted against you know dogs of that caliber up until that point and i had a tough cast early i had early round wednesday night i had uh, uh david blake with uh, major pain and a little dog out of indiana named ray ray and a uh dog named bud ice a guy was hunting i believe from georgia but um that's probably the most memorable cast I've ever been in, you know, that that I won, you know. That's a big time cast. That's some big names on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was a good cast. Uh it it, it was a good cast. Uh, we pulled up to the spot and the and the ground was on fire. And the guys like we're going to hunt through there and they was burning this timber, like burning the underbrush. And I I didn't say nothing, but I'm thinking, I'm like, good Lord, it's ashes everywhere. These dogs are going to be running around trying to smell, be sucking ashes up in their nose, and this ain't going to be good, you know. Well, we cut loose, and Apollo struck 400, and uh, bam, just come treed right in front of us. And uh, I was struck, I struck for 75, and um, Jack was pecking around there and, and come treed what sounded like with Apollo. I don't know for what reason. Apollo, he packed his bags and left. And uh, I treed Jack in after that and walked in there and had a coon. I think um, maybe Moby Jr. treated a coon and Apollo got through the country and treated a coon. And then after the hunt, I was treed in there deep. I didn't need to treat him. He was probably three quarters through there. And there was two dogs treed that direction. But uh, Moby was treed too. And Mr. Eddie, he treed Moby, uh, uh, the Moby Jr. dog. And well, when he treed, just in case they was on the same tree, I had to tree because if he was under another coon, I was beat. So I treed in behind Mr. Eddie and it got in there and, and they had coons, but, uh, and I, that's how I won. Was that the first time you'd ever hunted with Mr. Eddie or any of those guys? Yeah. Yes, sir. And I enjoyed it too. Uh, Mr. Eddie, he's a, a nice, he's a good man, a real nice man. And, and we had a good cast. It was, uh, like I said, it was Michael and, and John and Mr. Eddie. Yeah. Mr. Eddie, he is a great guy. He really is. So, yeah. Since you've been back into hunting, give me an example of some slick handling that you've done or that you've seen. Man, uh, like I said, I'm not, I'm not no 
seasoned handler or well i i know one example and and it was at the, actually at the world hunt it was on the heads up cast at the world hunt like jack had treated a coon uh, right out the truck 68 yards first and first on a coon and uh the dog we was hunting against backed him right there which i mean most dogs would have right there you know and uh cut loose again you get through the country the other dog gets 100 strike which 75 jack trees another coon another dog's there with him cut loose again kind of gets quiet no we cut loose again and the other dog goes back to the previous tree we go in there and uh he's handled and 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 then and they start scoring it i'm thinking which i'm just spectating you know i'm thinking to myself i'm like this is the same tree and they haven't realized it yet you know and they're scoring it and about that time i believe casey realized hey this is the same tree you know <laughs> and uh and uh he, the guy says here he is i got him and and we walk out there in the edge of the field and and uh Casey said look here guys he said this is the same tree uh we had just scored and uh judge is like well i i don't know uh not sure i'm looking in case he looked on the ground he said yeah he said there's the ball of bob wire you about fell over when you was scoring this tree whenever jack was here and the judge said, yep you're right this is the same tree well we cut back loose and by this time jack is through the country he's across a black top over there on i looked on my garner on the map and it looked like he was on like a pond drain that drained off into a pond and he comes treating there and it and it didn't sound the best at all and by this time we're winning you know kind of in defensive i know casey's kind of in defensive mode or whatever and not wanting to have to do nothing and uh jack's he's, he's racking on back in there and judge puts the stationary on him he gets down there you know pretty close and uh jack i don't know if he get to take him a breather or what and uh and uh judge said two working on your stationary and jack opened two or three times and Casey said, there he is right there, a little bit right-handed. And Joe said, yep, stationary broke. And then uh, he ain't moved nowhere. That son was still there. He <laughs> but it's start the stationary again, run the time down. And uh, just killing hunt time, you know, and stuff like that. But nothing really stands out, you know, in particular. When you say that, I, I'm, I'm sure I've seen some slick handling and probably had some slick handling done on me and somebody beat me like that, and I didn't even realize. <laughs> yeah. So... You were talking about how Casey, or Casey's a really good handler in your eyes. What makes him a good handler? And so what separates him being a good handler versus a novice? Casey, well, first off, he's been doing this stuff, you know, since he was a kid. And uh, he's got a club here by the house, and he's been president for Shongaloo Club or over the Shongaloo Club for 25 years. And he was coon hunting before that, and I don't think he's but like 44 years old. So, I mean, he's been around coon. His daddy was a competition coon hunter, and I believe they hunted blue ticks or something. And uh, But uh, to me, what, what makes Casey a good handler is, uh, with, with anything, experience, you know, is the is the experience is the best with anything. But he keeps his composure, and uh, you can't rattle him in a cast. He's I don't care what you do. You're not going to get him worked up. He's going to stay calm and he knows what he's got to have and he knows what he don't need and uh he, he's just the right well-rounded handler I, I i've seen casey he, i've seen him win i mean i've seen him win with anything he's a good handler the other night we was at a hunt right here by the, by the house and the guy he come in there he said you give casey Dooley a standard poodle and he'll figure out how to get in somewhere <laughs> and uh he's a good handler him and old jack just click you know he like he told me, he said, all I'm going to do is just turn him loose. He said, he's not my dog. I don't own a hair on him. I'm going to turn him loose, and I'm going to call him for what he does. And, uh, that you know, that's where it's, that's, that, that's just what it is what it is. So what type of feed do you feed? I feed um, extreme dog fuel. The manufacturer isn't too far, just north of my house here, about 32 miles. It's a good feed. Uh, I'll swap to it. I was feeding another line of dog food and uh man it was just inconsistent and my dog stool was real hard and it was strained and i had trouble using the bathroom and everything and i talked to a man named mr russell he i think he's the maybe the product manager at uh, extreme dog fuel and uh, i asked him about it even before before i swapped over and started feeding it i asked him about it i called him myself and uh 
I ended up going out and trying it. And man, I, I would recommend it to anybody. It's it, it's it's some good feed. Uh, and what blend do you feed, and why? I feed uh the the twenty six eighteen blend. Probably with the winter coming on, I'm gonna swap to the thirty twenty, just to give dogs a little extra edge and maybe a little little more insulation through the winter. But um. I feed the 2618 and, and, and I feed it to my puppies and everything. I mean, I just, I think that's kind of a, I feel like that, that blend is a kind of a, uh, it kind of work anywhere, you know, uh, hot, cold, winter, summer. I, I feel like that blend is kind of a do all, you know? Yeah. And extreme dog fuel, you know, they sponsor this podcast. So, so I swapped to extreme too. And, I mean, I'm blown away by it. I really am. I really do like it. My neighbor fed it, and that's who turned me on to it. And I contacted him and said, look, you know, I mean, would you like to sponsor podcast or whatever? And, man, people that – people support their dog food, they don't even have pro staffers, or and they don't really sponsor anything. But people love their dog food so much that they, they support them and that they push them. It's affordable, too. That's what's really good about it is it's really affordable. Yes, and it's a really great dog food. I mean, it's a it's a seventy dollar dog food for forty five dollars. Yes, sir. You know, yes, sir. In my opinion, is that kind of how you feel about it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, like I said, I like dogs like it. Clean up good. Kennels clean. Kennels are clean, and uh, and and like I said, it, it, they the dogs seem to like it, and and their stools consistent. That's that's one thing I look at with dog food is consistency in their stool because i mean we can look at it but our body's not processing it you know <laughs> we can look at it and and study on it and everything and when you got four five six hounds around here and uh all of them stools consistent i, I think that's you know what comes with the dog food yeah you know and it's not a flashy company or anything like that but like you said you talked to mr russell mr russell's the vice president of sales for extreme dog fuel you can call him or Mr. Keith, yes, who's a CEO, and you can talk to them on the phone about their dog food. Yes, sir. You know, and they have as much experience as anybody does within the dog food community. And yes, sir. I, me personally, that means a lot that I can call and talk to them. You know. Oh yes, sir. Yeah, um, let's just like this. Uh, you know, if if say something happens, and you know, this is just a scenario. Uh, you get a sack of food or something, and, and say something. You know, you got a feeling that something may be different in it or whatever. Instead of guessing or trying to do research on the computer about one of your bigger brands of dog food, you can call them up and say, hey, did y'all change anything in the blend or this or that? You know, and they can tell you. Yeah, and you're, you're right. And a lot of people up north probably won't know what we're talking about, but but you can get it down south. You know, it is throughout oh, yes, the sir. south, you know, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, Arkansas, Tennessee. I plan on having them on here to explain more about the dog food, and they've talked to me about it and explained to me about it, and it's – you know, and they're not going to sit here and say that the other dog food isn't good either. You know, there is high, other high quality dog food, but what they provide is a quality dog food at a, a quality price, you know? Yes, sir. And I really do. I, I have been blown away by swapping my dog to it, and I feed the 3020 year round now. So, so do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, sir. Uh, I appreciate you, you know, calling me and doing this right here and, and everything, and I don't. Unless you got any more questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them. No, I think we about shine this tree. Well, Blake, it was good to have you on here, buddy. And I do appreciate you coming on here and talking with us and giving these people a breakdown of the world hunt and telling us about Jack and extreme dog fuel. I do appreciate it, man. All right, buddy. Well, I'll talk to you later. Yes, sir. All right. You have a good one. Bye. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. I really hope y'all enjoyed that interview as much as I did. If you like what you heard here, go on over to Facebook. Give us a like, at Coon Hunting U. Also, go to Apple Podcasts. Leave us a rating and a review. It really helps us out. And remember, if you need a new hunting light, do not overlook Superior. They make an awesome light, best customer service in the business. Man, their walking light and double red is the brightest I've ever seen. Use coupon code CHU Podcast at checkout at nighthunters.com. You can find the link in the description box below this. Coon Hunting University is a product of Audio Hound Productions. Until next time, y'all have a wonderful day.